So what are the um, financial hierarchy options in S4? As I mentioned in the introduction, the concept of a hierarchy is not a new feature in SAP, but there are new options available. So the most common hierarchy that you do need to have in the system that's mandatory is the standard hierarchy. So for cost centers and profit centers, the standard hierarchy must still be manually maintained. And this is mandatory or required when SAP master data is created. In order to use this hierarchy in an effective way, there's often a strong reliance on complex numbering conventions or certain ranges of cost centers or profit centers in order to make the standard hierarchy easier to maintain. But it's still a manual process that's mandatory in order to successfully create a cost center or profit center master record. And the standard hierarchies have to contain every single cost center or profit center. Then we had the concept of the alternate hierarchy. So cost centers and profit centers, you are always able to manually create your own groups and that can still be used in the system. So here you can use classic SAP GUI or there are also Fiori apps to create these alternate hierarchies or groups. Again, here there tends to be a strong reliance on numbering conventions in order to easily create these groups or they can be manually assembled. So standard hierarchy is still mandatory today in S4. Alternate hierarchies, you have the option to use SAP GUI or Fiori apps, but a new third option of the flexible hierarchy, this is brand new to S4. So it's a new option and available from on-premise version 1709. So these hierarchies, they function in the same way as alternate hierarchies do. But the main benefit here is that they are self-maintaining based on any master data field existing on the cost center or profit center. So let's go ahead now and look at the detail around this flexible hierarchy and see what is new about it and what are the benefits of using a flexible hierarchy. So the key concept is that flexible hierarchies are based on a definition and there's a specific app called Manage Flexible Hierarchies to launch this capability. So when we say a definition, master data fields on the cost center or profit center are effectively used as tags to define the hierarchy. So you can think of it as using metadata. And when you use these tags or the metadata or these fields, this sets the sequence for the hierarchy. And we'll show an example now. The sequence can be easily changed to generate a new hierarchy. So the bottom line here is that you create a definition. It's based on fields or tags. You set the sequence and then the hierarchy is automatically generated and the sequence can be edited at any time. Fury reporting apps can then take advantage of these flexible hierarchies. So any um, financial reporting app in Fury can benefit from the new hierarchies. But SAP GUI standard reports cannot use these new hierarchies. This is important to note. So if you create a hierarchy using flexible hierarchies. If you go into SAP GUI and look at a regular cost center report from SAP GUI or Report Painter, something like that, you will not be able to use the flexible hierarchies. You do need to use the new finance reporting apps in Fiori in order to see the benefit. And in order to create these definitions for the structure of the hierarchy, multiple definitions can exist and they can also have their own validity dates. So you can also create a new structure that's only valid from a certain date. And definitions can be changed after they've been created, or you can create new definitions and have more than one. So let's have a look at that in more detail. So looking at the flexible hierarchy, I'm going to take this example of a cost center. So this box on the right hand side here is a view of the cost center master data. So here you have your typical cost center number, the controlling area, the validity dates, the name of the cost center, and then your basic data here we have maybe a person responsible, cost center category, you know, company code, functional area, currency, profit center, etc. These standard fields are still the fields that you use today. And the assignment to the standard hierarchy here doesn't change. But what does change is, change is that if I take this cost center with this key data over here, I can create a hierarchy definition for the flexible hierarchy. So let's just say, for example, I would like a cost center hierarchy and I want groups or the branches of the hierarchy to be cost centers grouped by company code. And then under each company code, I want branches of the hierarchy to be broken down or summarized by functional area. I can use that to automatically generate a hierarchy that will give me that structure. With, and each field that you have in the definition ends up being a branch. So in this example, if I pick company code as my first uh, sequence, then company code 1710 will be a branch in the hierarchy and the next company code, say 1720, will be a branch in the hierarchy. 
and it's using the company code field from the right hand side here as part of that definition. Then for the second level of the hierarchy I chose functional area so the system will look at the functional area here in the cost center master record and it will then as the second level of the hierarchy create subtotals or branches for each functional area example production and admin under company code 1710 and again production and admin functional area by company code 1720. So hopefully you'll see by this example that the key concept here is I look at some fields that I would like to use in my master record. I lay out a sequence or a definition. In this case I've said my sequence is I want company code first, functional area second. And well, as long as I've set that definition then the system will automatically generate a hierarchy showing me level one company code groups and level two functional area groups hence creating this flexible hierarchy or tree. And the reason why it's called a flexible hierarchy is that it's based purely on these two green boxes here for the definition. If I create another option and I put functional area first and company code second or I pick a department or a category or any other custom field that I add to the master record this hierarchy will dynamically change according to that definition and this is why it's very flexible and easy to use. So the high level process flow here will be is that when I'm managing these flexible hierarchies the first step is to maintain the master data that you have, then create the hierarchy definition. So in that case, I said I wanted company code and functional area. Hierarchy gets generated, and then you can use it in the Fiori apps. So remember that in order to create the definition, you need to make sure that the metadata fields or these master data fields have been maintained. You, there's no point in using a field on the cost center master record like department if you haven't actually maintained the values. And just as a um, a quick note here is that depending on the versions you have, there will be different capabilities. So in version 09, 1709, cost center and profit center were part of this flexible hierarchy structure. On newer versions like 1809, company code also gets added. But for this purpose in the system we're on, we're going to focus on cost center and profit center. So that's the introduction of that concept. And now we'll get into lessons where we then now actually watch live demonstrations of how we actually create those hierarchies. Mm -hmm.